Happy Sunday, Church at My House family. Welcome to the final week of our two-part series called Heaven on Earth, where Pastor Jason is taking a closer look at the perspectives of Mary and Joseph upon finding out that Mary would give birth to Jesus. Today, we'll gain insight and lessons from Joseph's point of view. Joseph's human response to a powerful interruption was to divorce Mary, but God had much better plans. Instead of reacting out of fear, let's discover other things God calls us to do when we face life's unexpected interruptions. Let's check out the message for more. Welcome to churchatmyhouse.com. I'm Pastor Jason, and I'm so thankful that you are worshiping with us today. Wherever you're at in the world, I want you to know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. And we're excited to be on week two of our Christmas series, Heaven on Earth. Last week, we talked about Mary and the song of praise that Mary sang when she found out that the, the baby inside of her was the Son of God. And today I want us to switch gears a little bit and talk about Joseph. You see, we have tremendously high expectations of Christmas, don't we? We want everything to be perfect. We have pictures in our minds of our children's playing, carolers singing, and people of smiling and getting along. But often it's just not that way. It's supposed to be, as the song says, the most wonderful time of the year and the hap happiest season of all. But for many of us, this can be a difficult time of year because something has interrupted your joy. It may be sickness or death or divorce or loneliness. We look to the Christmas season to be a time of perfect peace and harmony and joy. But the first Christmas was not that way at all. The first Christmas was actually an interruption. Interruptions can happen at any time. And consider the timing of Joseph and Mary's interruption. They were engaged to be married. Like Christmas, engagement was supposed to be a wondrous time. But it was during this time that an angel appeared to Mary and told her she would be miraculously, as a virgin, conceive and give birth to the Son of God. What joyful news, yet what an interruption. How would she explain her pregnancy to Joseph? Would he even believe her? Would he be willing to take on that kind of responsibility? You know, we really don't know about Jesus' earthly father, Joseph. We know that Joseph was a direct descendant of King David. He was a gracious man who kept the Jewish laws and was well respected. He was a man of meager means, but nonetheless an honorable and faithful man, skilled as a carpenter in the small town of Nazareth. Joseph spent time teaching his son the trade as well as providing spiritual training. Joseph observed the holy days and the Hebrew feasts with his family. We see that in Luke chapter 2. It says that every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. So we know he was very faithful to his faith. A little detail of Joseph is given in the Gospels. Since Jesus entrusted his mother Mary to the care of John, it is speculated by scholars that Joseph may have died a natural death during Jesus' young adulthood. But we do know how Joseph reacted when Mary told him she was pregnant with God's son. And the Bible says that he didn't believe her. How could he? His plans for a happy home with the woman he loved were dashed before his life. His life, as well as hers, had been powerfully interrupted. And if we're not careful, our response to interruptions can send us down the wrong path. And Joseph nearly went down the wrong path himself because when he discovered Mary's pregnancy, he was devastated. He could not buy her story about a virgin conception. As much as he loved her and wanted to be with her, there was nothing to do but divorce her. You see, a betrothal was an ancient engagement, and it was more binding than today's engagement. The only way out of an engagement during this time was to get divorced. In fact, Joseph had the right to have her stoned to death because he thought she had been unfaithful. 
But Joseph was a good man and an honorable man. And he did not want to embarrass her and he did not want to harm her. And the Bible says that he decided that he would divorce her privately. This was Joseph's human response to a powerful interruption. But oh, what a mistake it would have been. You see, interruptions often bring knee-jerk reactions in our life. And I want to encourage you, instead of reacting out of fear or emotion or feeling, let us instead react out of faith. So let's answer the question, what do we do? What do we do when our lives have been interrupted? Let's dig into Matthew chapter 1 and see what the Bible says, starting in verse 18. It says, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You see, the first key to handling unexpected interruptions is that you have to get God's perspective. Thankfully, God rescued Joseph from his error. I can imagine Joseph learning about Mary's situation and tossing and turning in bed, not knowing what to do. Finally, when he makes the decision, an angel comes to him and gives him God's perspective. Joseph, God is involved in this. That baby inside of Mary is God's son. And he woke up and he changed his mind. It's amazing how our minds change when we get God's perspective on situations and circumstances in our life. And thankfully, even today, there are ways that we can still get God's perspective on the things that we're going through. We, we can do it through prayer and fasting. Disconnecting from this world and connecting to God. Spending time with Him. Seeking Him. Reading his word, getting into God's word, reading the Bible each and every day. And I would encourage you, uh, sometimes we get our Bibles out and we'll just flip the pages and, and just start somewhere. I would encourage and challenge you to start at the beginning of a chapter. Start at the beginning of a book of a Bible. And so you can understand the whole context about what is going on. Maybe it's praise and worship. Maybe you have some of your favorite worship songs or praise songs and you get alone with God and you just pour your heart out in praise to Him. Maybe it's going and getting mature Christian counsel and finding mature Christians in your life that you can get their input. But listen, if their walk and their talk don't match, then don't accept their counsel. You need to make sure you're getting wisdom and advice from mature people who are faithfully following God. And we have to put the interruption in the proper perspective. How bad is it? How long will it actually be important? What difference will it make in light of eternity? If we keep going in verse 22, it says, All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through His prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. You see, the second thing we have to do is we have to trust God's providence. Keep in mind that God in His providence is still in control of your life. Nothing can happen to you without the leave and notice of the Father. And in Joseph's dream, the angel reminds him of that prophecy that was written by Isaiah. Isaiah 7.14 says, 
All right, then the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The angel is saying, Joseph, look, remember the scripture. Remember the scriptures that you have read your whole life. A virgin is going to conceive a child and it will be the son of God. It will be God with us. And it's Mary. It's your Mary, Joseph. The prophecy is being fulfilled. But God, this just doesn't make sense. You see, earlier this week in my quiet time, I came across another story in the Bible that just didn't make sense. It's a story about an Old Testament leader named Joshua. And he became the leader of Israel after Moses died. And in Joshua 1.3, God promised Joshua that when he led the people across the Jordan River, he would give Joshua every place that he set his foot. And three days later, God dried up the Jordan for his people to cross over. All of the Amorite kings and the Canaanite kings heard how Joshua was leading his people And they just folded. They didn't even have the courage to face God's people. Everything was going great until they came to an interruption. They came to a wall, the walls of Jericho. Jericho was this strong and fortified city with huge walls on every side. Joshua had a promise that the land was theirs, but the people of Jericho were not just going to hand it over. And they chose to stand their ground inside of their fortress. But here's what's amazing. God told Joshua and the people of Israel to march around the walls of Jericho. He gave them a plan to defeat them, but it wasn't like any other military plan that you could imagine. God said, march around the city one lap a day for six days, and on the seventh day, make seven laps and blow the ram's horn trumpets. And the walls would collapse, and that's just what happened. It made no sense from a military perspective. But God knows what He's doing. And he can be trusted. You see, the reason that Jericho fell before Joshua is because Joshua fell before God. He trusted God's providence, even when it didn't make sense. And the Bible shows us in this Christmas story that Joseph did the same. He woke up from his dream with a renewed trust in God's providence over his life. And in verse 24, we see the final key in handling interruptions this Christmas season. It says in Matthew 1.24, When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. The final thing that we need to do is we need to embrace God's plan. I love the simplicity and the directness of this verse. He woke up and he obeyed. He didn't try to find a way out. He just did what God told him to do. You see, interruptions in our life can also positively redirect our lives. And this was true of Joseph and Mary. Their plans were interrupted. But oh, what an interruption. Can you imagine a more wonderful privilege than to be the human parents of the Son of God. The direction of their future was not as they had planned, but it was so much better. Have you ever considered that God could do that sort of thing in your life? To take an interruption, an unforeseen problem, and use it to set your life on a better path a better way, God's best life for you. Whatever interruption you may be facing this Christmas season, I just want you to stop and give thanks to God. Praise Him in the middle of difficult circumstances and trust Him because He always has your best interest in mind. 
Now, maybe you're watching and you know about God, but you don't know God in a personal way. I want you to know that in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world, not meaning the planet, meaning the people of the world, meaning you. God so loved you that He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, that anyone who believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a beautiful verse because it means that God loves you so much. He did not want you to experience a real place called hell. He did not want you to perish and die a spiritual death. Instead, He wanted to give you eternal life, everlasting life in a place called heaven with Him. It's a beautiful promise and it's a beautiful free gift. And there's nothing we can do to earn it but we can receive it because of everything God has already done for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. You see in this story of Mary and Joseph, they did have a son named Jesus, a baby born in a manger, the King of kings, born in a humble place. But that baby didn't stay a baby, and he grew into a man, a man who healed people and loved people. And taught us how to live. A man who lived a sinless life. Who never sinned against God or people. Jesus. And one day he willingly gave himself up to die on a cross. To be our substitute. To take the punishment that we deserved. He gave his life so that we could have true life. But he didn't stay dead. And the Bible says that three days later he rose again and he is still alive today. And he is sitting on the right hand of the Father and he is praying for you and he is pursuing you because he loves you that much. And he has a best life available for you. And it all starts by following Jesus. And I want to give you the opportunity to follow Jesus today because I promise you your life will never be the same. If that's you, if you're watching, if you're listening, and you know something is missing, I'm going to tell you what's missing is Jesus. And I want you to know that in this moment, you can give your life to Him. I invite you to pray with me, and if that's the decision you're making, is to follow Jesus with your life, just pray this prayer with me today. God, I realize that I'm a sinner. I've been doing things and thinking things and saying things that dishonor you. God, I've been trying to be the boss of my own life. I've been really trying to be the God over my own life. And frankly, God, it's not getting me very far. And I know today from your word that you have a best life available for me. And it all starts with Jesus. And so God, today, I say I believe that Jesus died on a cross. And I believe he rose again from the dead so that I could have a brand new life. God, I believe that Jesus took my punishment so that I could have true life. Jesus, you're my Lord, and I want to follow you for the rest of my life. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. If that was you, I want to congratulate you because you are forgiven And I believe that God has given you a brand new life. And one day when you die, you will go to heaven to be with him. But while you're here on this earth, he will send his spirit to live inside of you. You will have heaven on earth. And while life may not be perfect, it will be blessed because you get to do it with God. But please don't click off this video without letting us know you gave your life to Jesus. You can click on the prayer request tab underneath the video. And give us a name and email address. Mark that you became a Christian today. Reach out to us so that we can reach out to you because we want you to know your faith doesn't stop today. It starts today. And we want to help you grow to be more like Jesus. We want to help you through the interruptions of life. Maybe you're watching and you have another prayer request in your life. Maybe it is because of divorce or a death in your family. Maybe it's because of financial issues. Maybe it's even because of a health issue. Fill out that prayer request link and let us know because our prayer team wants to pray over you because at Church in My House, we love you and we are for you. And we believe Jesus loves you and he is for you too. 
thank you again for watching week two of Heaven on Earth. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas this year, and I cannot wait to see you next week. Do you find yourself dealing with an unexpected interruption in your life? God is in control and nothing is too big for Him to handle. He has a better plan for you than anything you could dream up for yourself. Consider taking whatever you may be facing today and asking, God, are you using this to do something great in my life? Thank and praise Him through the highs and lows, and the peace that Jesus came to bring us will be yours. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you Tuesday evening for our Christmas Eve service.